This is Adam Kokesh at 1 p.m. on Saturday, October 1st at McPherson Square for Occupy DC. I'm a student at George Washington University. I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania originally, and I'm here mostly because I think this is kind of a watershed moment. This is really the first time there's been any sort of widespread action by the parts of regular people. I mean, you have the Tea Party rallies, but I'm not sure this is quite the same. I mean, the Tea Party rallies have been stimulated in large part by an organizing machine funded by corporate money, whereas this was started, I mean, really by some people on Facebook and Twitter I don't like basing uh, who is deserving of fair treatment and human treatment in the world on who has money. I'm here because I'm a student and I'm only a junior, I'm already in debt. People who aren't here today are generally consenting to all the things we're trying to fight, even if they agree with us, you know, in their private thoughts. This is Occupy DC, right? You're here to Occupy. There's some start of, of a bit of an encampment back here in McPherson Square. Are you planning on staying uh, indefinitely here until, until your demands are met? Um, yes and no. I'll be staying here a lot, but I still have to go to school, so that won't work. So you're considering this an encampment. You're encouraging people to come out. You want people to come and, and stay with you and occupy the space McPherson Square. Right, yes. There are certain things called civil liberties, which are limitations on democracy. How are those going in America right now? <laughs> um, not so great, but um, the First Amendment in this country, I think, is uh, one of the few things that's uh, left in this country, which I think are among the greatest in the world. Wait a second. Uh, Obama, our, our president, just assassinated an American abroad with a drone strike, Anwar al for what amounts to speech crimes. All he did was exert influence. And you're saying that the First Amendment is alive and well in this country? Why is education so expensive? Good damn question. <laughs> um, why is it? Because it's an industry. It's, education is an industry, and just, uh, just in the same fashion that banks have been privatized and, and you know, um, the military has been privatized in a lot of ways, I feel like education has as well. Actually, education has been more publicized or, or made part of the public sphere with government since the institution of the Department of Education in the 70s and since government has grown, government has taken a, a greater and greater control of our education, both in what we call public and private, even in, in, in private colleges now. Right. Government has more of a role than ever before in, in funding and controlling. Do you think that affects the, the cost of education for students? I, I think that, once again, the real crux of the problem, I guess, in response to what you just said is that um, the government is not necessarily being completely run um, by and for the general population. That it's uh, the government is is fully uh, privatized, which is no surprise, and it's not even um, something that you know I can. It's a global issue. Uh, it, it's just how politics works. But I feel like the government is being funded by the one percenters, and so it, it falls down into our education systems and and so on and so forth. So, what, so you're asking that for that same system that's funded by the one percenters, that, that government that exists to serve the one percenters, to now give out more educational benefits as, as it has been that, is, that have created this problem? Oh yeah, yeah totally. I think that we need to take the lead of um, France has done a good job of insisting that education is affordable. I think that we need to shift our focus from the people who, uh, the one percenters onto the general population uh, and, and educate the people that have nothing, you know, and, and are willing to work and are willing to use their brain power and, and we need to create more jobs and we need to, you know, create more financial opportunity for people that are willing to go get educations and find work. Who's we when you say we in, in those statements? The 99%. Would you all support the impeachment of Barack Obama? For, for what specifically? Anything. Your choice. Because I don't like his tie? Like. That, that's not even a question. For the war in Afghanistan, yes. What about for his assassination of a U.S. citizen for speech crimes? I mean, it's a bad thing. It's definitely a bad thing. Not impeachable? If I thought it was 
realistic or useful to the country to unseat the president right now, especially a year before an election? Like, it's a bad thing, but is it going to really benefit the country? What concrete benefits do we achieve by impeaching him? Well, we'd get a dangerous, violent extremist out of office, at least. Yeah, but what happens to the country? Doug just said that he supports the use of force if it's what? If it maximizes social justice, if it can improve the lot of everyone, if it can increase the standard of comfort among the people, if it can maximize freedom, the ability to live our lives, and it improves our well-being, then yes, I believe there should be force. I believe force against another human being is always morally wrong, no matter what the excuse or any individual's judgment of what is good for the rest of society, and any initiation of force is in inevitably detrimental to human happiness. All right. I mean, I agree with that. It, it, does do bad things sometimes. Force can be misapplied. But let me ask you this. When you have a wealthy, powerful class, how do you induce voluntary cooperation on them to maximize social justice? You don't induce voluntary cooperation. You don't tolerate force or aggression in any form. Well, so what's the solution then? Raise the standard of morality in society to condemn all forms of initiation of force between human beings. Well, you can set up an a uh, sort of ideological framework to encourage voluntary cooperation, but at the end of the day, the CEO of ExxonMobil or BP is just doing his job. He's still held accountable to a different set of obligations. You can have these, this private morality, and then you can have the obligations he has to deliver a profit to his shareholders. So how do you bridge that gap? The only way he has an advantage in the market in the first place is because force is applied by government in his advantage to keep out competitors. If there was a true free market, he wouldn't have that advantage. He wouldn't have that ability to gain an economic advantage through the force or threat of force by others. The reason that he has an advantage in the first place is because if people try to compete and get around the regulators that he's bought off or already figured out a way to comply with because of his existing concentration of economic force, uh, of, of financial wealth, then you don't have the ability to compete. He's not going to, he's, he's not going to, you don't, he's not initiating force. It's the government that's initiating force. And if you say the government should initiate more force, the government should have more control, what you're saying is that your ideas are going to be imposed on other people by force. I'm saying no, it is unacceptable to ever do that. Persuasion and peaceful cooperation is the only sustainable way to get past these problems with society today. Well, I mean, I obviously believe that my ideas are persuasive enough and beneficial enough to society that people should subscribe to them at the conclusions of their own reason and their own sense of right and wrong, but frankly, some people don't. And, yes, and at the end of the day, you will use force against those people. I believe that it's the role of the government to use force. So you won't do it yourself. You'll hire someone else to do it, basically. That's what a government is. I'm really ready to get Obama in a second term, and I'm really ready for him to really grab his cojones and, and you know, speak out not only for, it's not about Democrats. Like I said, it's about um, the middle class and the lower class. You're not here to impeach Obama? I thought, I thought this was a protest. Hell no, I'm not here to impeach Obama. I'm not anti-government by far. I just am pro-reform. Education costs have kept going up under Obama. The wars have kept going up under Obama. The bailouts have kept going up. And yeah, we've Obama actually, as of seven months into his presidency, deployed more troops abroad than Bush had his entire term. He is the most pro-war president uh, that, that we've had in terms of financial expenditures on war and having escalated the war in Afghanistan. Why do you support a second term for that kind of violence. You off on that because I, I really don't I, I don't agree with those statistics at all. I have never seen that. I have no idea where so you. You don't think we've escalated in Afghanistan with Obama, or that that Ob you don't think you're saying Obama hasn't escalated the war in Afghanistan? I think that we are in a lot of shit. I think that all of our focus as a country has been focused on the Middle East, and I believe that Obama definitely could have done more. I, I would like to see no troops in the Middle East. I, I would, but I, I'm glad that we're out of Iraq, and I'm glad. We're, we're not out of Iraq, though. I understand, and you can talk to Halliburton and Bush about that. But you know, we still have we still have tens of thousands of troops in Iraq, and under the plan that Bush had actually in 2008 when he was leaving office, we would have had troops out of Iraq sooner than under Obama. Who are you? I'm independent. I'm working. I'm just making a video for my YouTube channel. Okay. Well, uh, I don't want to talk to you much longer. Okay. I guess they don't want to talk. Well, this is Adam Kokesh reporting from Occupy DC here at McPherson Square, downtown Washington. We have a small, enthusiastic crowd with big ideas for violent government. We're, we're the over 
educated and the underemployed. Thank <laughs> you.